It's a beautiful morning here on the east coast of Trinidad as the sun's rays begin peeping out of the regular cloud cover, a cover that provides a canopy for the Nariva Swamp, a freshwater wetland, the largest of its kind in Trinidad and Tobago, covering some 60 square kilometers and recognized by the International Ramsar Convention as a wetland of international importance. In its shelters lie a myriad wildlife species from the endangered manatee. To these soldier crabs, which appear to be warming themselves in their oversized claws as they forage through the mangrove here in the river. Overhead, many types of birds call this home, from parrots to ibises, egrets, and other swamp birds. These waters also provide a home to caimans, alligators, and a wide variety of fish, including an ample supply of the cascadura and the black freshwater conch taste delight on many a dining table. But there are other internationally popular dwellers here as well. This is home to the famous red howler monkey, so named from the sounds they make. And their cousins, the white-faced capuchin monkeys, share the same habitat. Capuchin monkeys were named after the capuchin monks, who wear brown robes with large hoods over their heads, the early explorers felt these monkeys resembled the friars, and so derived their name. All usually go about their merry business, but not today. Another occupant has dared showed its presence to the monkeys, causing quite a stir. The anaconda, the giant anaconda named because of its size. This legendary snake is found in South America on the only Caribbean island, Trinidad. It is said that they can grow up to 50 feet in length, weigh over 500 pounds, live up to 50 years. Their diet comprises anything they can wrap their bodies around, crush and swallow. And these capuchin monkeys know this. This anaconda sees a meal anyone will do. The white-faced capuchins usually hang together in large groups. They are omnivores, eating fruits, insects, birds, eggs, crabs, among their varied diet. Today, they are on the anaconda's menu, but they won't go down without a fight. These white-faced capuchin monkeys face humans as their greatest predator. Indiscriminate hunters kill them for sport or captured and kept as pets despite many pieces of legislation. Baby? Hey, baby? Oh, you pretty dress on. They don't like clothes. <laughs> they are considered to be the smartest of the monkeys in this part of the world. And that description is being put to the test against this anaconda today. Any one of them would be an ideal meal for the snake, ensuring that it can sleep with its belly full for up to a week. But not today. Even mothers with their young clinging to their backs have joined a small army, gathered to defend against the invader. Capuchin monkeys have been known to mark their territory with urine. That would explain the bravery of this fellow who touches the snake, and then tries to find a smell. Today, the howler monkeys have taken the higher ground. And the noise, howls and roars are coming from these smaller fellows using ingenious ways to dislodge the anaconda. A battle of wits, of survival, of a hunt, a search for food, and the defense of the homeland. A test of skills and victory in the end. Today, the anaconda has no success. The noise, the techniques, and the battle plan of these white-faced capuchins have chased the snake away. 
Today, a fairly large member of the giant anaconda species, with all its fame and glory, gathered from movies, documentaries, stories, tales, and folklore. Today, it's just another hungry creature, as it finds comfort in the nearby stream, slithering away into oblivion for now. Tomorrow may bring another story.